Hello, viewers. How do Makali breweries determine ABV? That's today's question. I'm going to try to answer it as best I could. There's a very short answer and there's a longer answer. And of course, things are, things are a lot more complicated than I thought at first. Now, I've tried to calculate ABV before. I have a hydrometer and a, a refractometer. I tried using some methods, um, using those tools to calculate ABV, but um, I just felt my answers, I couldn't trust them. It, it was just not, uh, not very precise. The kind of measurements I was doing were not precise enough, and uh, the variations I was getting was, were just too great. Um, it was better just to uh, taste it and make a guess based on how it tastes. That was uh, that was the kind of accuracy I was uh, or or precision I was getting. But I recently visited some some real uh, microbreweries of Makali, and uh, they have to determine their ABV. They keep track of that. So uh, how did they do it? Well, okay, here's here's the short answer. What they do is they use a Keldal distillation apparatus. Looks something like this. This one uh, is used by uh, by Holy Water Brewing. They make uh, they make Mark Holy Makali. And here's another example. This was at C Makali, another Keldal apparatus. Uh, you distill a sample and. Uh, make some measurements, and you find out the ABV that way. So that's, that's the short answer. This is what they use to determine ABV. So what is the actual procedure for this? Um, so I found this step-by-step -step description here. Let's just go through it. Um, this, uh, I find this to be interesting because uh, of the different steps. These, these are not things I had thought of doing, of course, in my kitchen, um, where you know you just measure using you know a measuring cup, or you weigh on a kitchen scale. And uh, this procedure, um, in order to be both uh, precise and accurate, you need to to uh, follow these steps very carefully. Um, if you don't, all kinds of things can introduce errors. So the, um, let's go through uh, this step-by-step -step procedure. So first thing you do is you um, measure out 250 milliliters of your wine that you want to measure. So you have a volumetric flask for that, a, a flask made for measuring um, you know, uh, as accurately as possible. That's 250 milliliters. But of course, then you have to pour that out uh, from the volumetric flask into the distillation flask. And when you do that, of course, there's some residue in the, in the first flask and uh, you need to rinse that out with distilled water. So now, um, uh, and then you, the total volume is just approximately 450 milliliters. You're not measuring the volume precisely at this point. What is precise is the original a volume of wine that was exactly 250 milliliters so so that's what's important the, you have an original amount of wine that's precisely measured and you're going to try to figure out the alcohol in that original sample okay it says add some boiling chips so you can boil it uh, safely and uh, set up a certain apparatus that's the distillation apparatus and uh, apply heat to the bottom of the boiling boiling flask and uh, collect the distillate. So the idea in this step is uh, that all of the alcohol in the original sample will evaporate and go into the uh, the collection flask and uh, and some water as well. So it's not pure alcohol, it's alcohol mixed with water, but the point is that all of the alcohol in the original flask will evaporate. So, um, and, uh, and none of it is, is leaking out into the air. So all of it goes into the collection flask. Okay, various more steps to uh, you know, safely deal with the distillation. Um, okay. So the receiver flask here, um, 
you rinse any residues uh, from that into the uh, into the volumetric flask that you're measuring in the end. Okay, so so all of the alcohol has uh, has been distilled out of the original flask, and it's now in your collection flask that you're going to measure, and uh, it's less than 250 milliliters, and you add the distilled water up to 250. Okay, so so what have you done here? You have something with exactly the same amount of alcohol as you started out with, and uh, um, the remainder of that flask is filled with distilled water. So it now it's just a pure alcohol and water mixture, um, and you uh, you bring it to uh, twenty degrees Celsius and. Uh, Right. This is the procedure to get it to 250 milliliters and 20 degrees Celsius exactly for both of that. So both the temperature and the volume are, are controlled. And uh, you're going to use, now you get to use the hydrometer. You, you, uh, now what's important is the density of this, uh, of this 250 milliliters that you've you know, carefully uh, adjusted by adding water. Now this is ex exactly 250 milliliters with the same original alcohol by volume as the original wine. So you've done all that. Just to remove all the non-water, non-alcohol components from the wine. Those are things that would mess up the hydrometer measurements of alcohol. So you... you uh, that, that 250 milliliters is enough to, uh, to use the hydrometer. So, um, and you actually are careful to rinse the cylinder with that, uh, with your collected uh, distillate. And then, but you still have enough leftover distillate to pour that in the cylinder and use the hydrometer. And uh, again, the temperature is, is important um, it thought you measured the uh, volume at the 20 degrees Celsius, but by the time you pour it out, you know, it, it's going to depend on the room temperature. It's not going to be at 20 degrees. The temperature is going to affect the hydrometer measurements of alcohol. And uh, so you look at a table and you get your result. Another important thing is the hydrometer you're using. It's going to be an alcohol hydrometer. Uh, it might, I use the, you know, the cheap one that has a wide range for, for your wine, you're going to use one that, uh, let's say, is accurate, um, has a range of between, say, 10 and 20 percent alcohol by volume. And that's going to be a wider hydrometer than the one I have, um, which is not so precise by being, uh, by restricting the range, um, it allows this hydrometer to be more precise which is what you need if you're doing this um, commercially. Okay, so this is the procedure. There's a lot of steps here. This is, this is why my earlier attempts, um, use, using a different kind of method, but um, you know, I can never do this method um, with, with the equipment I have now. So, um, because I can't, for one thing, I don't have the glassware to do the distillation properly, but just I don't have any of the things to measure uh, pre precisely enough and my hydrometer is too uh, simple as well um, if you thought that procedure was was complicated um, look at the look at this procedure um, here's a this actually explains more about um, some of the assumptions you can you can make you know I have naive assumptions about how distillation works that you raise the temperature, and then all the alcohol is going to evaporate, and pretty much none of the water. That isn't really what happens. You get a, you get both the water and uh, alcohol evaporating at the same time, and you can only do it to a certain degree. Um, you never get pure alcohol. Um, it's pretty. So, if you're interested in those details, I'll put the link. Um, this is a more careful uh, description, more steps, how to calibrate the, both the temperature and volume at the same time, 
adjusting the pH. Um, but other than, uh, uh, so there are a few more steps in this uh, procedure, but it's, it's the same idea. So some of these points here um, are uh, illuminating to me. One of the things it says here, sugar interferes with uh, many methods for determining alcoholic strength. And that uh, I'm sure that was the case for uh, when I tried to do my measurements too. Uh, so And also acidity or sulfur dioxide. So that's both of those things are, can be present in wine pretty easily. So that explains why I had so much trouble trying to calculate ABV in my kitchen. I just didn't have the right equipment. And uh, they, use, uh, they use hydrometers with a large bulb. And I used you know, a cheap hydrometer with a small bulb. So using uh, specific gravity density measurements with a hydrometer, um, it's uh, you know, logically correct, but the range of density is so small that and that explains why it's so difficult to uh, to get an accurate measurement of ABV and also uh, the temperature. So so uh, uh, I'll put links to all of these in the description. Um, I hope this was illuminating. If you're trying to calculate ABV in your kitchen, um, you might need some additional equipment and procedures in order to do things accurately. So that's, uh, and this explains why. So I hope you found this interesting. Thank you very much for watching. Let me know what you think of this in the comments. Thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.